It is sad but true that for years, some people have been using storm drains to dispose of their wastes. Some people see storm drains as free, convenient trash cans. But the truth is, it has never really been free. Our environment has actually been paying the price all this time. Storm sewer systems aren't like sanitary sewers. Sanitary sewers take waste from bathrooms and kitchens and clean them up by sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection. Storm sewers, on the other hand, do not treat or clean up anything passing through them. Storm sewers are just pipes and ditches designed to channel clean stormwater runoff away from urbanized areas. As this harmless tracer die demonstrates, Everything that enters a storm drainage system is eventually discharged into a stream, river, lake, or bay in exactly the same form as it entered. The same would be true if this was trash, oil, paint, garbage, chemicals, or whatever. In many urbanized areas of the U.S. today, polluted stormwater runoff and snowmelt is the number one cause of surface water pollution. One of the responsibilities of municipalities that operate storm sewer systems is to prevent what the EPA calls illicit discharges. Illicit discharges are any discharges of non-storm water, which is virtually anything that didn't originally fall from the sky, into or through the storm sewer. When illicit discharges enter surface waters, they can injure or kill wildlife. They can suffocate plants and fish, destroy breeding and nesting areas, make game fish inedible, cause algal blooms that consume the oxygen in the water and make the water unsafe for swimming or recreation. Illicit discharges can also cause beach closures and have been responsible for temporary shutdowns of drinking water treatment plants. Remember that for most Americans, stormwater runoff is the main source of our drinking water. Many of us see one of the most common sources of illicit discharges every day. Trash that didn't quite make it into an outdoor dumpster or trash can. See these? They're called floatables. Because paper, plastic, cardboard, packing materials, and the like float on the runoff, they're easily washed into the nearest storm drain inlet by the next storm. Liquids being disposed in an outdoor trash can or dumpster are also illicit discharges. Unless those containers are lidded or covered and leak tight, that dumpster juice will make it into the nearest storm drain with the next rain. You may have seen or heard about other bad practices, like dumping used motor oil, engine coolant, or cigarette butts onto the street or down the storm drain. Like rinsing soapy water, even biodegradable soapy water, from a car washing area into the street. Like cleaning floor mats, filters, paintbrushes, screens, mops, or other items outdoors. Then think about all the driveways, parking areas, and sidewalks that get hosed down. That wastewater follows gravity right into our storm drains. And that dirty wash water that carpet cleaners and auto detailers discharge onto driveways and streets, where do you think that winds up? Using a storm drain to dispose of unwanted garden chemicals like fertilizers or pesticides. Or for pet wastes, leaves, grass clippings, or car ashtrays, it's just like dumping these wastes right into the nearest stream or river. Everyone in town has a responsibility to dispose of wastes properly in the trash for solid wastes, down the sanitary sewer for sanitary wastes, in the yard for car wash water, at the nearest household hazardous waste facility for hazardous wastes, but never, never down a storm drain or into the street. Then, we all have a further responsibility to help stop any illicit discharge from occurring anytime or anywhere. Our role in this is, first, by telling our family and friends about illicit discharges and the harm they cause to the environment. Then, on top of that, we can all stay alert to spot and report illicit discharges occurring in our neighborhoods. The best place to spot an illicit discharge is at its source, at the inlet, catch basin, drainage channel, or ditch where it first enters the storm sewer. 
The tricky part is, more often than not, no one actually sees an illicit discharge occurring. Illicit dischargers are often called midnight dumpers. All they leave is evidence of past practices. To spot this evidence, be on the lookout for things like stains on storm drain inlets and in open drainage channels. Used oil, paint, radiator coolant, and many other pollutants leave easy to spot discoloration. Another dead giveaway is empty containers on or near a storm drain inlet or by the roadside. Those containers were probably emptied into the storm drain. If you see a pipe or a hose leading into a storm drain, someone probably uses it to dispose of waste frequently. In fact, just about any small diameter, open-ended pipe that appears to discharge onto a driveway, street, or drainage ditch could be a source, especially pipes that are seen to be flowing in dry weather. Illicit discharges can also be spotted at outfalls. Outfalls are where storm drainage systems discharge into surface waters. The outfall may be an open pipe, culvert, or ditch. The first suspicious thing to look for when observing a storm drainage outfall is again that dry weather flow. Most outfalls should be dry during extended periods of dry weather. While there are some allowable non-stormwater discharges, like groundwater in areas with high water tables, most outfalls should not be flowing more than two or three days after the last rainfall. If stormwater is flowing at an outfall, one important sign to watch for is the appearance of the water. Pure stormwater or snowmelt is clear and bright. If the discharge has any color, if it is dark or cloudy, or if it has a persistent foam or scum floating on top, that is not just stormwater. Runoff contaminated with raw sewage often has a gray, greasy appearance. Runoff with gasoline in it may show a rainbow sheen. If you see this multicolored pattern, there's something more than stormwater in that outfall. An outfall that is bubbling, foaming, or giving off visible vapors, that's always a really bad sign. Another thing to look for is the vegetation around the outfall. If nothing grows there, it may have been killed by herbicides or other chemicals in the runoff. Then there's the odor. Outfalls should not have any smell. A raw sewage smell could be from a leaking or clogged sanitary sewer line which passes above or near a storm drainage pipe. This is a very common problem in older urban areas where sanitary sewer pipes may be 50 or even 100 years old. Also, if you smell a rotten or rancid smell at an outfall, that could indicate dumping of food wastes or garbage. If you detect any of these signs, they may be the results of past and, if allowed to continue, future illicit discharges into our surface waters. So, now you know all about illicit discharges the damage they do to the environment, what they look like, and how to spot them at their source or at an outfall. You can help stop stormwater pollution by picking up ordinary trash like floatables and leaves from curbs, streets, and especially around storm drains. Then dispose of that trash properly. But do not try to pick up or even touch any containers, boxes, or bags, or anything you cannot identify. They could be hazardous. You can also help by staying alert for any illicit discharges, such as liquid waste being disposed in a public park or a puddle of dumpster juice. If you see something like this, note the date, time, and place, and take a photo if possible. But as you now know, most of the time all that remains is evidence of past discharges, something you see or smell. But still, the same procedures apply. Note the date, time, and location, and take a photo. This applies to any of those unknown containers, boxes, or bags also. And, now this is really important, report any obvious or suspicious discharges to your local stormwater authority. They will go to work to eliminate the discharge. Once the immediate problem has been dealt with, the authority will try to trace back to the source of the discharge and put a stop to it. When they have been informed of the damage their illicit discharges cause, almost everyone quickly makes the changes necessary to eliminate the problem. In the worst cases, the municipality has the legal authority to compel illicit dischargers to clean up their act. 
If you have any information about possible illicit discharges, call your local public works or engineering department, or just call the main number for your city, town, or county, and ask who's responsible for stormwater. Are you ready to help? It is sad but true that for years, some people have been using storm drains to dispose of their wastes. Some people see storm drains as free, convenient trash cans. But the truth is, it has never really been free. Our environment has actually been paying the price all this time. Storm sewer systems aren't like sanitary sewers. Sanitary sewers take waste from bathrooms and kitchens and clean them up by sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection. Storm sewers, on the other hand, do not treat or clean up anything passing through them. Storm sewers are just pipes and ditches designed to channel clean stormwater runoff away from urbanized areas. As this harmless tracer die demonstrates, everything that enters a storm drainage system is eventually discharged into a stream, river, lake, or bay in exactly the same form as it entered. The same would be true if this was trash, oil, paint, garbage, chemicals, or whatever. In many urbanized areas of the U.S. today, polluted stormwater runoff and snowmelt is the number one cause of surface water pollution. One of the responsibilities of municipalities that operate storm sewer systems is to prevent what the EPA calls illicit discharges. Illicit discharges are any discharges of non-stormwater, which is virtually anything that didn't originally fall from the sky, into or through the storm sewer. When illicit discharges enter surface waters, they can injure or kill wildlife. They can suffocate plants and fish, destroy breeding and nesting areas, make game fish inedible, cause algal blooms that consume the oxygen in the water and make the water unsafe for swimming or recreation. Illicit discharges can also cause beach closures and have been responsible for temporary shutdowns of drinking water treatment plants. Remember that for most Americans, stormwater runoff is the main source of our drinking water. Many of us see one of the most common sources of illicit discharges every day. Trash that didn't quite make it into an outdoor dumpster or trash can. See these? They're called floatables. Because paper, plastic, cardboard, packing materials, and the like float on the runoff, they're easily washed into the nearest storm drain inlet by the next storm. Liquids being disposed in an outdoor trash can or dumpster are also illicit discharges. Unless those containers are lidded or covered and leak tight, that dumpster juice will make it into the nearest storm drain with the next rain. You may have seen or heard about other bad practices, like dumping used motor oil, engine coolant, or cigarette butts onto the street or down the storm drain. Like rinsing soapy water, even biodegradable soapy water, from a car washing area into the street. Like cleaning floor mats, filters, paintbrushes, screens, mops, or other items outdoors. Then think about all the driveways, parking areas, and sidewalks that get hosed down. That wastewater follows gravity right into our storm drains. And that dirty wash water that carpet cleaners and auto detailers discharge onto driveways and streets, where do you think that winds up? Using a storm drain to dispose of unwanted garden chemicals like fertilizers or pesticides. Or for pet wastes, leaves, grass clippings, or car ashtrays, it's just like dumping these wastes right into the nearest stream or river. Everyone in town has a responsibility to dispose of wastes properly in the trash for solid wastes, down the sanitary sewer for sanitary wastes, in the yard for car wash water, at the nearest household hazardous waste facility for hazardous wastes, but never, never down a storm drain or into the street. 
Then, we all have a further responsibility to help stop any illicit discharge from occurring anytime or anywhere. Our role in this is, first, by telling our family and friends about illicit discharges and the harm they cause to the environment. Then, on top of that, we can all stay alert to spot and report illicit discharges occurring in our neighborhoods. The best place to spot an illicit discharge is at its source, at the inlet, catch basin, drainage channel, or ditch where it first enters the storm sewer. The tricky part is, more often than not, no one actually sees an illicit discharge occurring. Illicit dischargers are often called midnight dumpers. All they leave is evidence of past practices. To spot this evidence, be on the lookout for things like stains on storm drain inlets and in open drainage channels. Used oil, paint, radiator coolant, and many other pollutants leave easy to spot discoloration. Another dead giveaway is empty containers on or near a storm drain inlet or by the roadside. Those containers were probably emptied into the storm drain. If you see a pipe or a hose leading into a storm drain, someone probably uses it to dispose of waste frequently. In fact, just about any small diameter, open-ended pipe that appears to discharge onto a driveway, street, or drainage ditch could be a source, especially pipes that are seen to be flowing in dry weather. Illicit discharges can also be spotted at outfalls. Outfalls are where storm drainage systems discharge into surface waters. The outfall may be an open pipe, culvert, or ditch. The first suspicious thing to look for when observing a storm drainage outfall is again that dry weather flow. Most outfalls should be dry during extended periods of dry weather. While there are some allowable non-stormwater discharges, like groundwater in areas with high water tables, most outfalls should not be flowing more than two or three days after the last rainfall. If stormwater is flowing at an outfall, one important sign to watch for is the appearance of the water. Pure stormwater or snowmelt is clear and bright. If the discharge has any color, if it is dark or cloudy, or if it has a persistent foam or scum floating on top, that is not just stormwater. Runoff contaminated with raw sewage often has a gray, greasy appearance. Runoff with gasoline in it may show a rainbow sheen. If you see this multicolored pattern, there's something more than stormwater in that outfall. An outfall that is bubbling, foaming, or giving off visible vapors, that's always a really bad sign. Another thing to look for is the vegetation around the outfall. If nothing grows there, it may have been killed by herbicides or other chemicals in the runoff. Then there's the odor. Outfalls should not have any smell. A raw sewage smell could be from a leaking or clogged sanitary sewer line which passes above or near a storm drainage pipe. This is a very common problem in older urban areas where sanitary sewer pipes may be 50 or even 100 years old. Also, if you smell a rotten or rancid smell at an outfall, that could indicate dumping of food wastes or garbage. If you detect any of these signs, they may be the results of past and, if allowed to continue, future illicit discharges into our surface waters. So, now you know all about illicit discharges, the damage they do to the environment, what they look like, and how to spot them at their source or at an outfall. You can help stop stormwater pollution by picking up ordinary trash like floatables and leaves from curbs, streets, and especially around storm drains. Then dispose of that trash properly. But do not try to pick up or even touch any containers, boxes, or bags, or anything you cannot identify. They could be hazardous. You can also help by staying alert for any illicit discharges, such as liquid waste being disposed in a public park, or a puddle of dumpster juice. If you see something like this, note the date, time, and place, and take a photo if possible. But as you now know, most of the time, all that remains is evidence of past discharges, something you see or smell. But still, the same procedures apply. 
Note the date, time, and location, and take a photo. This applies to any of those unknown containers, boxes, or bags also. And, now this is really important, report any obvious or suspicious discharges to your local stormwater authority. They will go to work to eliminate the discharge. Once the immediate problem has been dealt with, the authority will try to trace back to the source of the discharge and put a stop to it. When they have been informed of the damage their illicit discharges cause, almost everyone quickly makes the changes necessary to eliminate the problem. In the worst cases, the municipality has the legal authority to compel illicit dischargers to clean up their act. If you have any information about possible illicit discharges, call your local public works or engineering department, or just call the main number for your city, town, or county, and ask who's responsible for stormwater. Are you ready to help? It is sad but true that for years, some people have been using storm drains to dispose of their wastes. Some people see storm drains as free, convenient trash cans. Storm sewer systems aren't like sanitary sewers. Sanitary sewers take waste from bathrooms and kitchens and clean them up by sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection. Storm sewers, on the other hand, do not treat or clean up anything passing through them. Storm sewers are just pipes and ditches designed to channel clean stormwater runoff away from urbanized areas. Everything that enters a storm drainage system is eventually discharged into a stream, river, lake, or bay in exactly the same form as it entered. One of the responsibilities of municipalities that operate storm sewer systems is to prevent what the EPA calls illicit discharges. Illicit discharges are any discharges of non-stormwater, which is virtually anything that didn't originally fall from the sky, into or through the storm sewer. When illicit discharges enter surface waters, they can injure or kill wildlife. They can suffocate plants and fish, destroy breeding and nesting areas, make game fish inedible, cause algal blooms that consume the oxygen in the water and make the water unsafe for swimming or recreation. Illicit discharges have also been responsible for temporary shutdowns of drinking water treatment plants. Many of us see one of the most common sources of illicit discharges every day, trash that didn't quite make it into an outdoor dumpster or trash can. Paper, plastic, cardboard, packing peanuts, and the like are easily washed into the nearest storm drain inlet by the next storm. You may have seen or heard about other bad practices, like dumping used motor oil, engine coolant, or cigarette butts onto the street or down the storm drain. Like rinsing soapy water from a car washing area into the street. Like cleaning floor mats, filters, paintbrushes, screens, mops, or other items outdoors using a storm drain to dispose of unwanted garden chemicals like fertilizers or pesticides, or for pet wastes, leaves, grass clippings, or car ashtrays, is just like dumping these wastes right into the nearest stream or river. Everyone in town has a responsibility to dispose of wastes properly, in the trash for solid wastes, down the sanitary sewer for sanitary wastes, in the yard for car wash water, at the nearest household hazardous waste facility for hazardous wastes, but never, never down a storm drain or into the street. Then, we all have a further responsibility to help stop any illicit discharge from occurring anytime or anywhere. Our role in this is, first, by telling our family and friends about illicit discharges and the harm they cause to the environment. Then, on top of that, we can all stay alert to spot and report illicit discharges occurring in our neighborhoods. The best place to spot an illicit discharge is at its source, at the inlet, catch basin, drainage channel, or ditch where it first enters the storm sewer. Be on the lookout for things like stains on storm drain inlets and in open drainage channels. 
Used oil, paint, radiator coolant, and many other pollutants leave easy to spot discoloration. Another dead giveaway is empty containers on or near a storm drain inlet or by the roadside. Those containers were probably emptied into the storm drain. If you see a pipe or a hose leading into a storm drain, someone probably uses it to dispose of waste frequently. Illicit discharges can also be spotted at outfalls. Outfalls are where storm drainage systems discharge into surface waters. One important sign to watch for is the appearance of the water. Pure storm water or snow melt is clear and bright. If the discharge has any color, if it is dark or cloudy, or if it has a persistent foam or scum floating on top, that is not just storm water. Runoff contaminated with raw sewage often has a gray, greasy appearance. Runoff with gasoline in it may show a rainbow sheen. Then there's the odor. Outfalls should not have any smell. A raw sewage smell could be from a leaking or clogged sanitary sewer line which passes above or near a storm drainage pipe. And, now this is really important, report any obvious or suspicious discharges to your local stormwater authority. The information you provide can directly and quickly eliminate a major source of surface water pollution. Call your local public works or engineering department or just call the main number for your city, town, or county and ask who's responsible for stormwater. Are you ready to help? It is sad but true that for years, some people have been using storm drains to dispose of their wastes. Some people see storm drains as free, convenient trash cans. Storm sewer systems aren't like sanitary sewers. Sanitary sewers take waste from bathrooms and kitchens and clean them up by sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection. Storm sewers, on the other hand, do not treat or clean up anything passing through them. Storm sewers are just pipes and ditches designed to channel clean stormwater runoff away from urbanized areas. Everything that enters a storm drainage system is eventually discharged into a stream, river, lake, or bay in exactly the same form as it entered. One of the responsibilities of municipalities that operate storm sewer systems is to prevent what the EPA calls illicit discharges. Illicit discharges are any discharges of non-storm water, which is virtually anything that didn't originally fall from the sky, into or through the storm sewer. When illicit discharges enter surface waters, they can injure or kill wildlife. They can suffocate plants and fish, destroy breeding and nesting areas, make game fish inedible, cause algal blooms that consume the oxygen in the water and make the water unsafe for swimming or recreation. Illicit discharges have also been responsible for temporary shutdowns of drinking water treatment plants. Many of us see one of the most common sources of illicit discharges every day, trash that didn't quite make it into an outdoor dumpster or trash can. Paper, plastic, cardboard, packing peanuts, and the like are easily washed into the nearest storm drain inlet by the next storm. You may have seen or heard about other bad practices, like dumping used motor oil, engine coolant, or cigarette butts onto the street or down the storm drain. Like rinsing soapy water from a car washing area into the street. Like cleaning floor mats, filters, paintbrushes, screens, mops, or other items outdoors using a storm drain to dispose of unwanted garden chemicals like fertilizers or pesticides, or for pet wastes, leaves, grass clippings, or car ashtrays, is just like dumping these wastes right into the nearest stream or river. Everyone in town has a responsibility to dispose of wastes properly, in the trash for solid wastes, down the sanitary sewer for sanitary wastes, in the yard for car wash water, at the nearest household hazardous waste facility for hazardous wastes, but never, never down a storm drain or into the street. 
Then, we all have a further responsibility to help stop any illicit discharge from occurring anytime or anywhere. Our role in this is, first, by telling our family and friends about illicit discharges and the harm they cause to the environment. Then, on top of that, we can all stay alert to spot and report illicit discharges occurring in our neighborhoods. The best place to spot an illicit discharge is at its source, at the inlet, catch basin, drainage channel, or ditch where it first enters the storm sewer. Be on the lookout for things like stains on storm drain inlets and in open drainage channels. Used oil, paint, radiator coolant, and many other pollutants leave easy to spot discoloration. Another dead giveaway is empty containers on or near a storm drain inlet or by the roadside. Those containers were probably emptied into the storm drain. If you see a pipe or a hose leading into a storm drain, someone probably uses it to dispose of waste frequently. Illicit discharges can also be spotted at outfalls. Outfalls are where storm drainage systems discharge into surface waters. One important sign to watch for is the appearance of the water. Pure storm water or snow melt is clear and bright. If the discharge has any color, if it is dark or cloudy, or if it has a persistent foam or scum floating on top, that is not just storm water. Runoff contaminated with raw sewage often has a gray, greasy appearance. Runoff with gasoline in it may show a rainbow sheen. Then there's the odor. Outfalls should not have any smell. A raw sewage smell could be from a leaking or clogged sanitary sewer line which passes above or near a storm drainage pipe. And, now this is really important, report any obvious or suspicious discharges to your local stormwater authority. The information you provide can directly and quickly eliminate a major source of surface water pollution. Call your local public works or engineering department, or just call the main number for your city, town, or county, and ask who's responsible for stormwater. Are you ready to help? It is sad but true that for years, some people have been using storm drains to dispose of their wastes. A lot of people still don't know that storm sewer systems aren't like sanitary sewers. Sanitary sewers take waste from bathrooms and kitchens and clean them up. Storm sewers, on the other hand, do not treat or clean up anything passing through them. Storm sewers are just pipes and ditches designed to channel clean stormwater runoff away from urbanized areas. One of the responsibilities of municipalities that operate storm sewer systems is to prevent what the EPA calls illicit discharges. Illicit discharges are any discharges of non-storm water into or through the storm sewer. Many of us see one of the most common sources of illicit discharges every day. Trash that didn't quite make it into an outdoor dumpster or trash can. These wastes are easily washed into the nearest storm drain inlet by the next storm. You may have seen or heard about other bad practices, like dumping used motor oil, engine coolant, or cigarette butts onto the street or down the storm drain. Like cleaning floor mats, filters, paintbrushes, screens, mops, or other items outdoors. Like using a storm drain to dispose of unwanted fertilizers, pesticides, pet wastes, or car ashtrays. It's just like dumping these wastes right into the nearest stream or river. Report any obvious or suspicious discharges to your local stormwater authority. The information you provide can directly and quickly eliminate a major source of surface water pollution. Call your local public works or engineering department, or just call the main number for your city, town, or county and ask who's responsible for stormwater. Are you ready to help? It is sad but true that for years, some people have been using storm drains to dispose of their wastes. A lot of people still don't know that storm sewer systems aren't like sanitary sewers. 
Sanitary sewers take waste from bathrooms and kitchens and clean them up. Storm sewers, on the other hand, do not treat or clean up anything passing through them. Storm sewers are just pipes and ditches designed to channel clean stormwater runoff away from urbanized areas. One of the responsibilities of municipalities that operate storm sewer systems is to prevent what the EPA calls illicit discharges. Illicit discharges are any discharges of non-storm water into or through the storm sewer. Many of us see one of the most common sources of illicit discharges every day. Trash that didn't quite make it into an outdoor dumpster or trash can. These wastes are easily washed into the nearest storm drain inlet by the next storm. You may have seen or heard about other bad practices, like dumping used motor oil, engine coolant, or cigarette butts onto the street or down the storm drain. Like cleaning floor mats, filters, paintbrushes, screens, mops, or other items outdoors. Like using a storm drain to dispose of unwanted fertilizers, pesticides, pet wastes, or car ashtrays. It's just like dumping these wastes right into the nearest stream or river. Report any obvious or suspicious discharges to your local stormwater authority. The information you provide can directly and quickly eliminate a major source of surface water pollution. Call your local public works or engineering department, or just call the main number for your city, town, or county, and ask who's responsible for stormwater. Are you ready to help? It is sad but true that for years, some people have been using storm drains to dispose of their wastes. Storm sewer systems aren't like sanitary sewers. Sanitary sewers take waste from bathrooms and kitchens and clean them up. Storm sewers, on the other hand, do not treat or clean up anything passing through them. Everything that enters a storm drainage system is eventually discharged into a stream, river, lake, or bay in exactly the same form as it entered. One of the responsibilities of municipalities that operate storm sewer systems is to prevent what the EPA calls illicit discharges. Illicit discharges are any discharges of non-storm water into or through the storm sewer. When illicit discharges enter surface waters, they can kill wildlife. They can suffocate plants and fish, destroy breeding and nesting areas. Never pour or dump anything down any storm drain. It is sad but true that for years, some people have been using storm drains to dispose of their wastes. Storm sewer systems aren't like sanitary sewers. Sanitary sewers take waste from bathrooms and kitchens and clean them up. Storm sewers, on the other hand, do not treat or clean up anything passing through them. Everything that enters a storm drainage system is eventually discharged into a stream, river, lake, or bay in exactly the same form as it entered. One of the responsibilities of municipalities that operate storm sewer systems is to prevent what the EPA calls illicit discharges. Illicit discharges are any discharges of non-storm water into or through the storm sewer. When illicit discharges enter surface waters, they can kill wildlife, they can suffocate plants and fish, destroy breeding and nesting areas. Never pour or dump anything down any storm drain. It is sad but true that for years, some people have been using storm drains to dispose of their wastes. Storm sewer systems aren't like sanitary sewers. Storm sewers do not treat or clean up anything passing through them. Everything that enters a storm drainage system is eventually discharged in exactly the same form as it entered. These wastes can kill plants, suffocate fish, and destroy breeding areas. So, never pour or dump anything down any storm drain. It is sad but true that for years, some people have been using storm drains to dispose of their wastes. Storm sewer systems aren't like sanitary sewers. Storm sewers do not treat or clean up anything passing through them. Everything that enters a storm drainage system is eventually discharged in exactly the same form as it entered. These wastes can kill plants, suffocate fish, and destroy breeding areas. So, never pour or dump anything down any storm drain.
es triste, pero es verdad. Desde hace muchos años, hay algunas personas que usan los drenajes pluviales para desechar su basura. Algunas personas usan los drenajes pluviales como tirados gratuitos y convenientes, pero la verdad es que esto nunca ha sido gratuito. Nuestro medio ambiente ha pagado el precio todo este tiempo. Los sistemas de drenaje pluvial no son como los drenajes sanitarios. Los drenajes sanitarios toman los residuos de baños y cocinas y los limpian por sedimentación, filtración y desinfección. Los drenajes pluviales, en contraste, no tratan ni limpian nada que pase a través de ellos. Los drenajes pluviales son solo tuberías y zanjas diseñados para conducir el agua pluvial que escurre de las zonas urbanizadas. Tal como lo muestra esta inofensiva tintura de rastreo, todo lo que entra a un sistema de drenaje pluvial eventualmente se descarga a una corriente, río, lago o bahía, exactamente de la misma forma de la que entró. Lo mismo sucede con la basura, aceite, pintura, suciedad, químicos o cualquier otra cosa. En la actualidad, hoy, en varias zonas urbanizadas de los Estados Unidos, los escurrimientos contaminados de aguas pluviales y nieve derretida son la causa principal de contaminación del agua superficial. Una de las responsabilidades de los municipios que operan los sistemas de drenaje pluvial es evitar lo que la Agencia para la Protección del Medio Ambiente llama descargas ilícitas. Las descargas ilícitas son cualquier tipo de descargas de aguas no pluviales hacia o a través del drenaje pluvial. Cuando las descargas ilícitas entran a las aguas superficiales, pueden lastimar o matar a la vida silvestre, pueden sofocar a las plantas y peces, destruir las áreas de cría y anidamiento, hacer que los peces no sean comestibles, provocar algas nocivas que consumen el oxígeno del agua y hacer que el agua no sea segura para nadar o recrear. Las descargas ilícitas pueden provocar también cierres de las playas y han sido responsables de cierres temporales de plantas de tratamiento de agua potable. Recuerde que para la mayoría de nosotros, los escurrimientos del agua pluvial son la fuente principal de nuestra agua potable. Muchos de nosotros vemos todos los días una de las fuentes de descargas ilícitas más comunes, la basura que no alcanzó a llegar al bote o cesto de basura. Vea estos, se llaman flotantes, porque el papel, plástico, cartón, materiales de empaque y similares flotan en la lluvia y fácilmente se envían a la entrada del drenaje pluvial más próxima. Los líquidos que se desechan en un contenedor de basura externo o cesto son también descargas ilícitas. Si estos recipientes no son tapados o cubreados y si no se cierran herméticamente, esas filtraciones del contenedor de basura llegarán al drenaje pluvial más cercano la próxima vez que llueva. Probablemente ha visto o escuchado otros malos hábitos, como tirar aceite de motor usado anticongelante del radiador o colillas de cigarro a la calle o por el drenaje pluvial. Igual que enjuagar agua jabonosa, incluso agua con jabón biodegradable, desde una zona de lavado para autos a la calle. Como limpiar alfombras, filtros, brochas de pintura, coladeras, trapeadores u otras cosas en el exterior. Después, piense en todas las entradas de las casas, áreas de estacionamiento y banquetas que se lavan con mangueras. El agua residual sigue por gravedad hacia nuestros drenajes pluviales. Y esa agua sucia que se descarga a las vías de acceso y las calles por los que lavan alfombras y detallan autos. ¿Dónde crees que acaba? Usar un drenaje pluvial para tirar químicos de jardín no deseados, como fertilizantes o pesticidas, o para tirar desechos de mascotas, hojas, recorte de pasto o vaciar los ceniceros de los coches, es como tirar estos desechos directamente a la corriente o río más cercanos. Todos en su comunidad 
tienen la responsabilidad de desechar correctamente los residuos. En la basura, en el caso de los residuos sólidos. Por el drenaje sanitario, en el caso de los residuos sanitarios. En el patio para el agua, con que se lavan los autos en la planta más cercana de residuos peligrosos del hogar para los residuos peligrosos, pero nunca por un drenaje pluvial o hacia la calle. Además, todos tenemos la responsabilidad adicional de ayudar a evitar que ocurra cualquier descarga ilícita en cualquier momento y en cualquier lugar. Nuestro papel es, primero, avisar a nuestra familia y amigos acerca de las descargas ilícitas y el daño que pueden provocar al medio ambiente. Lo más importante es que todos podemos mantenernos alerta para detectar y reportar las descargas ilícitas que ocurren en nuestros vecindarios. El mejor lugar para detectar una descarga ilícita es en su origen. En la entrada, sumidero, canal de drenaje o zanja por donde llega primero al drenaje pluvial. Son más las veces que realmente nadie ve cuando sucede una descarga ilícita. Las personas que hacen descargas ilícitas con frecuencia se llaman tiraderos de medianoche. Solo dejan evidencia de prácticas pasadas. Para reconocer esta evidencia, manténgase alerta de señales como manchas en las entradas del drenaje pluvial y canales de drenaje abierto. El aceite usado, pintura, anticongelante de radiador y muchos otros contaminantes dejan manchas evidentes. Otra señal son los contenedores vacíos en la entrada de un drenaje pluvial o cerca de la entrada o junto a la carretera. Esos contenedores probablemente se vaciaron al drenaje pluvial. Si ve una tubería o manguera que van hacia el drenaje pluvial, probablemente alguien las use con frecuencia para tirar residuos. De hecho, casi cualquier tubería de diámetro pequeño, cuyo extremo abierto parezca descargar a una vía de acceso, calle o zanja de drenaje, puede ser una fuente, especialmente las tuberías que se ven fluir durante el clima seco. También pueden verse descargas ilícitas en los desagües, los desagües son donde los sistemas de drenaje pluvial descargan hacia las aguas superficiales. El desagüe puede ser una tubería abierta, una alcantarilla o una zanja. La primera señal sospechosa al observar un desagüe de drenaje pluvial es, otra vez, los flujos en clima seco. La mayoría de los desagües deben estar secos durante periodos extendidos de clima seco. Aunque hay algunas descargas permisibles que no son de agua pluvial, como las aguas subterráneas en zonas con mantos freáticos altos, la mayoría de los desagües no deben producir flujos más de dos o tres días después de la última lluvia. Si fluye agua pluvial en un desagüe, una señal importante que hay que observar es la apariencia del agua. El agua pluvial pura o nieve derretida son transparentes y brillantes. Si la descarga es de algún color, si está oscura o turbia, o si tiene una espuma persistente o sarro flotando en la superficie, eso no es solo agua pluvial. Los escurrimientos contaminados con aguas negras, por lo general, tienen una apariencia gris grasosa. Los escurrimientos con gasolina pueden mostrar un brillo de arco iris, si observa este patrón multicolor, hay algo más que agua pluvial en ese desagüe. Cuando un desagüe muestra burbujas, espuma o emite vapores visibles, es siempre una mala señal. Otra cosa que debe observar es la vegetación alrededor del desagüe. Si nada crece ahí, probablemente los mataron por los pesticidas u otros químicos de la corriente. Después está el olor. Los desagües no deben oler a nada. Un olor de aguas negras puede provenir de una tubería tapada de drenaje sanitario que pasa por encima o cerca de una tubería de drenaje pluvial. Este es un problema muy común 
de las zonas urbanas más viejas, en donde las tuberías de los drenajes sanitarios son de hace 50 o 100 años. Además, si un desagüe huele a podrido o rancio, puede indicar que se tiraron residuos de comida o basura. Si detecta cualquiera de estas señales, puede ser el resultado de descargas pasadas. Y si se permite que continúen, serán también descargas ilícitas futuras a las aguas superficiales. Ahora ya sabe todo acerca de descargas ilícitas, el daño que hacen al medio ambiente, cómo se ven y cómo detectarlas en su origen o en un desagüe. Usted puede ayudar a evitar la contaminación de las aguas pluviales recogiendo la basura común, como los flotantes y las hojas de los bordes de las aceras, las calles y especialmente alrededor de los drenajes pluviales. Después, deseche esa basura correctamente pero no trate de levantar ni tocar los contenedores, cajas, bolsas, ni cualquier otra cosa que no pueda identificar. Podrían ser peligrosos. Puede ayudar también manteniéndose alerta ante cualquier descarga ilícita, como los residuos líquidos que se desechen en un parque público o un pozo de filtraciones del contenedor de basura. Si ve algo así, anote la fecha, hora y lugar y si es posible, tome una foto. Pero como usted sabe, la mayoría de las veces lo único que queda es la evidencia de descargas pasadas. Algo se ve o huele. Sin embargo, debe aplicar los mismos procedimientos. Anote la fecha, hora y lugar y tome una foto. Esto se aplica para todos esos contenedores, cajas o bolsas desconocidos. Bien. Esto es muy importante. Reporte cualquier descarga obvia o sospechosa a su departamento de aguas pluviales local. Se pondrán a trabajar para eliminar la descarga. Una vez que se ataque el problema inmediato, la autoridad tratará de rastrear el origen de la descarga y ponerle fin. Cuando se les informa del daño que provocan sus descargas ilícitas, casi todos hacen rápidamente los cambios necesarios para eliminar el problema. En los peores casos, el municipio tiene la autoridad legal de obligar a los responsables de las descargas ilícitas a limpiar las descargas que han provocado. Si tiene cualquier información acerca de posibles descargas ilícitas, llame a su departamento de obras públicas o ingeniería locales o solo llame al número principal de su ciudad, pueblo o condado y pregunte quién es responsable de las aguas pluviales. ¿Está listo para ayudar? Es triste, pero es verdad que desde hace varios años hay algunas personas que usan los drenajes pluviales para desechar su basura. Algunas personas ven los drenajes como tiraderos gratuitos y convenientes. Los sistemas de drenaje pluvial no son como los drenajes sanitarios. Los drenajes sanitarios toman los residuos de baños y cocinas y los limpian por sedimentación, filtración y desinfección. Los drenajes pluviales, en contraste, no tratan ni limpian nada que pase a través de ellos. Los drenajes pluviales son solo tuberías y zanjas diseñados para conducir el agua pluvial que escurre de las zonas urbanizadas. Todo lo que entra a un sistema de drenaje pluvial eventualmente se descarga a una corriente, río, lago o bahía exactamente de la misma forma en la que entró. Una de las responsabilidades de los municipios que operan los sistemas de drenaje pluvial es evitar lo que la Agencia para la Protección del Medio Ambiente llama descargas ilícitas. Las descargas ilícitas son cualquier tipo de descargas de aguas no pluviales hacia o a través del drenaje pluvial. Cuando las descargas ilícitas entran a las aguas superficiales, pueden lastimar o matar a la vida silvestre pueden sofocar a las plantas y peces, 
destruir las áreas de cría y anidamiento, hacer que los peces no sean comestibles, provocar algas nocivas que consumen el oxígeno del agua y hacer que el agua no sea segura para nadar o recrear. Las descargas ilícitas también han sido responsables de cierres temporales de plantas de tratamiento de agua potable. Muchos de nosotros vemos todos los días una de las fuentes de descargas ilícitas más comunes, la basura que no alcanzó a llegar al bote o cesto de basura. El papel, plástico, cartón, empaques de poliestireno y los similares se arrastran fácilmente a la entrada de drenaje pluvial más cercana con la próxima tormenta. Probablemente ha visto o escuchado otros malos hábitos, como tirar aceite de motor usado, anticongelante del radiador o colillas de cigarro a la calle o por el drenaje pluvial. Al igual que enjuagar el agua jabonosa de una zona de lavado de autos a la calle. Como limpiar alfombras, filtros, brochas de pintura, coladeras, trapeadores u otras cosas en el exterior. Usar un drenaje pluvial para tirar químicos de jardín no deseados, como fertilizantes o pesticidas o para tirar desechos de mascotas, hojas, recorte de pasto o vaciar los ceniceros de los coches, es como tirar estos desechos directamente a la corriente o río más cercanos. Todos en su comunidad tienen la responsabilidad de desechar correctamente los residuos, en la basura, en el caso de los residuos sólidos, por el drenaje sanitario, en el caso de los residuos sanitarios, en el patio para el agua, con que se lavan los autos, en la planta más cercana de residuos peligrosos del hogar para los residuos peligrosos, pero nunca por un drenaje pluvial o hacia la calle. Además, todos tenemos la responsabilidad adicional de ayudar a evitar que ocurra cualquier descarga ilícita en cualquier momento y en cualquier lugar. Nuestro papel es, primero, avisar a nuestra familia y amigos acerca de las descargas ilícitas y el daño que pueden provocar al medio ambiente. Lo más importante es que todos podemos mantenernos alerta para detectar y reportar las descargas ilícitas que ocurren en nuestros vecindarios. El mejor lugar para detectar una descarga ilícita es en su origen, en la entrada, sumidero, canal de drenaje o zanja, por donde llega primero al drenaje pluvial. Para reconocer esta evidencia, manténgase alerta de señales como manchas en las entradas del drenaje pluvial y canales de drenaje abierto, el aceite usado, pintura, anticongelante de radiador y muchos otros contaminantes dejan manchas evidentes. Otra señal son los contenedores vacíos en la entrada de un drenaje pluvial o cerca de la entrada o junto a la carretera. Esos contenedores probablemente se vaciaron al drenaje pluvial. Si ve una tubería o manguera que van hacia el drenaje pluvial, probablemente alguien las use con frecuencia para tirar residuos. También pueden verse descargas ilícitas en los desagües. Los desagües son donde los sistemas de drenaje pluvial descargan hacia las aguas superficiales. Una señal importante que hay que observar es la apariencia del agua. El agua pluvial, pura o nieve derretida, son transparentes y brillantes. Si la descarga es de algún color, si está oscura o turbia, o si tiene una espuma persistente o sarro flotando en la superficie, eso no es solo agua pluvial. Los escurrimientos contaminados con aguas negras, por lo general tienen una apariencia gris grasosa. Los escurrimientos con gasolina, pueden mostrar un brillo de arco iris. Después, está el olor. Los desagües no deben oler a nada. Un olor de aguas negras puede provenir de una tubería tapada de drenaje sanitario que pasa por encima o cerca de una tubería de drenaje pluvial. Bien, esto es muy importante. Reporte cualquier descarga obvia o sospechosa a su departamento de aguas pluviales local. La información que le proporcione puede eliminar directa y rápidamente una fuente mayor de contaminación de agua pluvial. 
llame al Departamento de Obras Públicas o Ingeniería Local o solo llame al número principal de su ciudad, pueblo o condado y pregunte quién es responsable de las aguas pluviales. ¿Está listo para ayudar? Es triste, pero es verdad que desde hace varios años hay algunas personas que usan los drenajes pluviales para desechar su basura. Mucha gente aún no sabe que los sistemas de drenaje pluvial no son como los drenajes sanitarios. Los drenajes sanitarios se llevan los desechos de baños y cocinas para limpiarlos. Los drenajes pluviales, en contraste, no tratan ni limpian nada que pase a través de ellos. Los drenajes pluviales son solo tuberías y zanjas diseñados para conducir el agua pluvial que escurre de las zonas urbanizadas. Una de las responsabilidades de los municipios que operan los sistemas de drenaje pluvial es evitar lo que la Agencia para la Protección del Medio Ambiente llama descargas ilícitas. Las descargas ilícitas son cualquier tipo de descarga de aguas no pluviales al drenaje pluvial. Muchos de nosotros vemos todos los días una de las fuentes de descargas ilícitas más comunes, la basura que no alcanzó a llegar al bote o cesto de basura. Estos residuos se arrastran fácilmente a la entrada del drenaje pluvial más cercana con la próxima tormenta. Probablemente ha visto o escuchado otros malos hábitos, como tirar aceite de motor usado, anticongelante del radiador, o colillas de cigarro a la calle o por el drenaje pluvial, como limpiar alfombras, filtros, brochas de pintura, coladeras, trapeadores u otras cosas en el exterior. Igual que se usa un drenaje pluvial para desechar los fertilizantes no deseados, plaguicidas, residuos de mascotas o ceniceros de los autos, es como tirar estos residuos directamente a la corriente o río más cercanos. Reporte cualquier descarga obvia o sospechosa a su departamento de aguas pluviales local. La información que le proporcione puede eliminar directa y rápidamente una fuente mayor de contaminación de agua pluvial. Llame al departamento de obras públicas o ingeniería local o solo llame al número principal de su ciudad, pueblo o condado y pregunte quién es responsable de las aguas pluviales. ¿Está listo para ayudar? Es triste, pero es verdad. Hay algunas personas que usan los drenajes pluviales para desechar su basura. Estos no son como los drenajes sanitarios. Los drenajes sanitarios se llevan los desechos para limpiarlos. Los drenajes pluviales no limpian nada. Todo lo que entra al drenaje pluvial eventualmente se descarga a una corriente, río o lago exactamente como entró. Una de las responsabilidades de los municipios que operan los sistemas de drenaje pluvial es evitar lo que la EPA llama descargas ilícitas. Estas son cualquier descargas de aguas no pluviales hacia un drenaje pluvial. Cuando estas entran a las aguas superficiales, pueden matar a la vida silvestre, sofocar a las plantas y peces y destruir las áreas de cría y anidamiento. Nunca tire nada a un drenaje pluvial. Es triste, pero es verdad. Hay algunas personas que usan los drenajes pluviales para desechar su basura. Estos no son como los drenajes sanitarios. Los drenajes pluviales no limpian nada. Todo lo que entra al drenaje pluvial eventualmente se descarga de la misma manera de la que entró. Estos residuos pueden matar a las plantas, los peces y destruir las áreas de cría. Nunca tire nada por ningún drenaje pluvial. 